Hey guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. First off, gonna start out with a big birthday shout out to Kaya Girl. I've known Kaya Girl since, jeez, well, six years ago when I started YouTubing. So, happy birthday. Hope you enjoy it. She's also in our Raid Shadow Legends clan. Anyway guys, today we're gonna be reviewing Skull Crusher. Skull Crusher, an epic champion, one of the best epic champions inside the entire game. As you can see from his ratings here, he's really shines in, uh, not just arena defense, but also in clan boss as being one of the only three champions in the game that give your allies, the other champions on your team, the ability to counter attack. So he's also the only ep the only non-legendary, the other two being Martyr and Valkyrie, that has that ability. So what is counter attack? Guys, I'm going to start doing these on all my champion uh, guides. Uh, some of it's probably obvious to a lot of you guys, but I feel like we should kind of just go over the nuances of these abilities as we talk about them. Uh, so counterattack. When attacked, this champion will, uh, will, with the buff, excuse me, strikes back at their attacker using their default skill, so their A1. This attack deals 75% of the normal default skill damage. A lot of people don't realize that, that it's only 75% of the damage of their normal, uh, default skill. Can only counterattack once when attacked with a multi-hit skill. Does not counterattack in response to an enemy's own counterattack and does not count as a turn for that champion. So that is counterattack. That's what makes Skull Crusher so special. So here's my Skull Crusher. He is a defense based champion, which, you know, you guys have probably heard it before, but yes, defense and HP based champions, defense especially, is what you're looking for for end game viable champions. Uh, and you can see his skills before we get to the artifacts, the masteries, and we see him fighting the clan boss. Let's talk about his skills, right? What makes Skull Crusher so good? A lot of people actually unlock Skull Crusher and don't realize just how good he really is. So his first ability is Smash. Smash attacks one enemy, places a 50% heal reduction debuff if the target's defense is lower than this champion's. Obviously, the damage is also based on defense. With the heal reduction, the damage based on defense, and uh, it making sure his defense is high is going to be paramount when having success with Skull Crusher. So we're going to be building him with really that 4,000 defense kind of uh, goal in mind. Uh, in terms of his overall defense. We'll talk about that in, in a moment. Uh, of course, talking endgame here. So Stonewall is really what makes Skull Crusher so great. Places a 50% ally protection buff on all allies except this champion for two turns. Places a counterattack buff on all allies except this champion for two turns. Places an unkillable buff on this champion for one turn. So I, it would be really cool if that unkillable was two turns. It's only one, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. It's still a nasty, nasty ability, and it's what makes, again, Skull Crusher so good. So ally protection. What is ally protection, you ask? Well, let's go ahead and talk about it. Ally protection skill is a skill that allows a champion to soak a, po a portion of the incoming damage received by all allies to himself so weaker team members do not fall in one hit. He's a 50% ally protection, which is the, the bigger of the two variants. There's 25% and 50%. This skill is commonly found on, on HP champions to aid the survivability of the allies in battle. In this case, it's defense. If an enemy steals ally protection buff from your champion, the champion who casts the ally protection will now absorb the damage received by the enemy who stole it until the buff expires. A little interesting nuance to that ability. But ally protection is pretty good. And with the ally protection... Plus the counterattack, it makes him a good buffer of the rest of your party and also a good kind of support unit, again, soaking up 50% of your allies' uh, damage received for two rounds. You can book this to a three-turn cooldown. So essentially, two out of every three turns, you want to keep Skull Crusher a little bit slow as the slowest champion on your team. That way, out of every three turns, all of your champions, every three turns for Skull Crusher, all your champions get that fresh new ally protection and that fresh counter attack buff. Now, he also have a, has a passive, decreases the duration of all debuffs on this champion by one turn at the start of each turn. This is really notably good against a stun, right? So he'll just cleanse that stun off of him at the beginning of the turn, and that's a pretty decent passive. His aura is increased ally resist in faction crypts by 45, nothing too noteworthy there, although it is useful in uh, the faction crypt, obviously, uh, if you don't have another aura, because it's not that great. So, uh, Going on to artifacts, right? 
Uh, he does really, really well with Lifesteal because he's going to be taking all that extra damage, 50% of all your allies. Because of that, you want him to be as robust as possible. Obviously, Lifesteal helps because he actually hits for a decent amount of damage every three turns. He only has two abilities, right? So every three turns or uh, two non-passive abilities, right? So every three turns, he's going to be doing two A1s, two of his smash ability, and then one of his A2, right? So you, those A1s, he'll be healing himself back up with the lifesteal, heals by 30% of damage dealt, and his divine offense, that's, you know, that's because I didn't have another great set to put on him, and uh, and I did have some decent divine offense gear. So the name of the game with Skullcrusher is focusing on anything that has defensive substats on the top row of your artifacts, right? So I don't even know how great this stuff, you know what? First thing we look at here isn't even that great. We have a roll of two on HP on his uh, Divine Offense weapon. This is really the only weak spot right now, but I have it on him just to get that plus 15% HP uh, from the artifact uh, boost because the other artifact, the other Divine Offense I have is really good. Now, moving on, we're going to have defense as a substat and pretty much every other artifact that I have on Skull Crusher. So my helmet, uh, defense plus 11%. I lift it up to 12%. On his shield, defense 5%. Unfortunate rolls there, but still, I want that extra defense. I'm still using it because A, it's lifesteal. Again, very good on Skull Crusher. And B, uh, the it's a six-star artifact, so I'll take that defense on the shield, uh, getting that main stat up. Now, for the bottom row artifacts, Lifesteal Gauntlets. I went with defense on Gauntlets. I would actually recommend you guys do the same. Getting his defense up is so important for a variety of reasons that we've already talked about. He's going to be taking more damage, and his damage is based on defense anyway. Uh, so defense, uh, not bad. Uh, Lifesteal Gauntlets here. Uh, would love that 6-star to get it up to the 60%. Uh, would love to have defense as even a substat as well, but we don't, and uh, you know, I'm not going to complain. This is why I have the Divine Offense uh, weapon on him, because I have the six-star Divine Offense defense uh, chest plate. So going defense on the chest is also recommended. You could also go HP if you want more, uh, just HP, more survivability on him. But defense is still a great way to go, and I prefer defense on my Skull Crusher. So I went defense on the gauntlets, defense on the chest plate. Again, you can go HP if you'd like to, but I would recommend defense on the gauntlets. Boots, you can go defense if you want, but I definitely prefer to go speed. Again, you want him to be your slowest champion, uh, but you don't want, especially against clan bosses, whereas which I, I use him the most, but at the same time, you don't want to be so slow, right? So that speed on the boots is actually a great combo. You can also use a speed set instead of the divine offense set if you have those available. So speed with uh, the defense 12%. Yes, please. These are great boots for Skull Crusher here. Really happy with these boots. And then uh, in terms of the jewelry and stuff, could be a little bit better here. You want defense, but I had, you know, you kind of, you know how it is. You have what you have, right? I have the defense 10% on the substats on the ring, so I'm actually pretty happy with that. I went with the defense, only a four star on the amulet, uh, and no defense substat there. So again, nothing crazy, but I'll take it. And then the banner here is a defense banner, which is actually really solid uh, for Skull Crusher. So those, that's my gear, guys. If you look at my total stats, again, I'm really aiming for the 4,000 defense, but look at this HP 43k. That's pretty respectable, uh, considering I don't. I, I'm focusing mainly on defense. His defense is over 4,000. I'm really, really happy with how I have my Skull Crusher set up right now. It could be better, of course, because some of the substats were kind of weak on some of these artifacts for endgame, but I'm pretty happy with where he is. Now, Masteries, you have some options. You can go support or defense. Uh, with Skull Crusher. He's one of the champions that definitely benefits very, very well from all three of the different trees on Masteries. I decided to go with War Master because he actually hits pretty hard. His A1 hits for around, eh, depending on obviously what you're, you know, the, the, what you're, you're targeting, but on Clan Boss, depending on difficulty, he's critting for around uh, 70k or so, which is pretty significant, 80k. Uh, so I went War Master, also went uh, down the, the left side here with Methodical as well. On the defensive tree, I mean, he does not give himself counterattack. That's kind of the weak spot on his counterattack ability. 
So what you can do is kind of make up for that if you go down the defensive tree and go for retribution and also go for deterrence, which both give him an option of uh, counterattacking. You can see retribution has a 50% chance to counterattack when this champion loses 25% of their max HP or more from a single enemy skill, which actually happens, you know, fairly decently uh, often given when he has the ally protection up. And also he has deterrence. Deterrence has a 20% chance to counterattack when an enemy uh, an enemy when they apply a stun, sleep, or freeze debuff on this ally. And so that's really nice to have deterrence because it gives you that 20% chance to counterattack. And also, he has that cleanse, remember, uh, that the debuffs last one round uh, less on him anyway. So it's a pretty good combination. Now on support, you could definitely go down the support tree as well. And what you really want is kind of turn meter manipulation if you go down the support tree. There's plenty of kind of uh, mastery guides out there, though, to take a look at. So there is Skull Crusher, guys. We talked about his abilities, his artifacts, and his uh, masteries. Let's go ahead and see him in a live match here. I'm going to go clan boss here. I'm going to go so, let's see, we'll, let's go Brutal here, and we'll see how we do. This is the comp that I'm running right now. Clan boss is something that I really need to improve on in, in my clan. I have a pretty good team here, but it's just, I could just do much better with the comp. All these champions are good, kind of solo or, or in the right comp, but I don't have, nothing's come together, so to speak, right? So let's go ahead and watch for a minute or two, and then I will edit out and uh, just get to the total numbers at the end. You can see uh, Skull Crusher there on the, the left hand, the far left hand side of your screen, and there it is, the ally protection, the unkillable buff on himself at the same time. This is a really strong ability, guys. You can see Turvold uh, critting for over 200k, not too shabby. So, a cult brawler, by the way, might be the next champion that I do a guide on. You can see him right next to Skull Crusher to the right of him. Really, really good. So, 17k damage. Uh, nothing too crazy there. Also, guys, uh, good time to kind of talk about other areas to use Skull Crusher. We already talked about arena defense. He's also pretty decent in uh, the Fire Knight's Castle, right? Uh, because he has the heal reduction, the 100% heal reduction on his A1. So that's pretty solid uh, to use him there as well. So he's really, in my opinion at least, he's in kind of borderline S tier in, uh, in Clan Boss, Arena Defense, and in Fire Knight's Castle. So here we go. Uh, not amazing in campaigns or anything like that, unless you really need the defensive support to maybe grind through uh, like nightmare mode or something like that or whatever you're having problems with. He's a good support, but oftentimes when you're farming, it's not about support. It's about just kind of, you know, killing everybody as quickly as possible. So here we go. Again, you can see the team st uh, staying pretty healthy here. Uh, and it's all about that counterattack. There he goes, three rounds, and he gets the counterattack up for two more rounds. Meanwhile, he's just, you know, everybody's just piling on their damage. Let's see on his A1 again what he's hitting for here, and then I will fast forward to the end of this battle. So he is almost up, and you can see he's the slowest, and then he goes in. So not too bad, 43k uh, damage. Again, I've seen it as high as like 70, borderline 80, I want to say. Uh, but there we go, 42k again. So pretty consistent there, and it, it actually adds up. We'll see how much damage he ends up doing at the end of the battle. I'll, I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, just kind of wrapping things up here. He is almost dead. Uh, he might die now. Nope, unkillable. So he's oftentimes the last guy standing if you build him to be, again, kind of that robust support uh, champion. Uh, the damage could have been a lot better, but Occult Brawler actually fell relatively early into this fight. It went five minutes, and I think he fell at like 340 or so. So yeah, uh, his overall damage over a million, which is incredibly respectable, in my opinion, for a support counter attack uh, champion. And then you can see Turvold carrying the uh, the burden of the damage, four point six mil and a cult brawler at 3.9 actually netro i missed it over there at over just over 5 million so there you go guys that is the skull crusher guide a, a fantastic champion to go ahead and invest in you can use your books on skull crusher and of course uh, getting that cooldown on his a2 especially is going to be very paramount in terms of having success with him long term and uh, yeah just a great champion to have so if you've unlocked him congratulations thank you for watching this video guys i really appreciate it if you like the content here go ahead and toss me a subscription. It really means a lot to me, guys. I uh, appreciate it. And as always, thank you. Take care, guys.